Um, hi, I'm Steve Morrison um, from CSIS here. I'll be very brief. Um, this has been a terrific morning. I want to thank all of our speakers, particularly those that came from a long distance. Um, a couple of quick thoughts, with, particularly with reference to U.S. policy. Um, in terms of the, 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 the overall picture that came across from these two panels, it was very mixed, a very mixed view. Um, we kept hearing that um, the BRICS countries are really very, still remaining very state-centric. I don't think that's particularly surprising, that there's a, a fluidity in terms of a proliferation of options, BRICS, IBSA, G20, that um, there's a certain amount, uh, there's a, there's a south-south bias or e ethic uh, that enters much of the discussion. Sovereign choices that are being made uh, oftentimes in favor of multilateralism are not translating necessarily into health. I think one thing that we didn't talk a whole lot about is the public opinion climate in these countries and the fact that uh, typically putting, putting diplomatic energy and resources into health outside their borders is not a popular choice. Uh, it has, the case has to be made. There was very little discussion around the business sector. So those are some quick points. On the question around U.S. policy, um, it seems to me that uh, there's a couple of different, th there, there's a calendar of events in which these issues will play themselves through. Um, the most recent important event was the World AIDS Day last week, President Obama's address, uh, his commitment to uh, six million target of, of those on ART, his appeal in the aftermath of the Accra Global Fund board meeting, his appeal to China and other emerging powers to make the transition to become donors. This all gets to a very fundamental issue that's front and center in terms of U.S. policy, which is that in this era of austerity and, and progressive contraction of resources, you now have organizations like the Global Fund that are in a state, in a, in a confusing and bewildering condition uh, of, of, of considerable uncertainty as to the future. BRICS countries have been sort of ushered out of eligibility at the same time that they've been appealed to step forward as donors. It's a bit contradictory and confusing. There's some logic to all of this. But the bigger question is the, the, on the HIV, AIDS, TB, malaria, um, the, the core infectious diseases in poor countries, the mortgage that is out there today, the 6.6 .6 million people on treatment, there's considerable angst and uncertainty about how that will be sustained. Will it be sustained? How will it be sustained? And do emerging powers have a role to play in that? And if so, how do you get to that point? I don't think we, um, uh, we've, we've, we've gotten very far in thinking that through in terms of diplomatic strategy, but it is clearly a very, very uh, front and center uh, policy priority emerging at this point. This, a related issue is how do you reallocate existing money to get far better use of the dollars that are coming from multiple streams. Um, simply making a commitment to go from four million to six million without a major infusion of additional dollars is premised on the confidence that reallocation of resources uh, is workable and, and, and is an important basis for getting to that point. Certainly the UNAIDS strategic investment framework that has come forward uh, is based on a very similar kind of proposition. Where are the bricks in that discussion? Uh, that's not really clear to me. There was some discussion around NCDs. Um, I'm not, it's not clear to me that NCDs will, we, will continue to have legs as a mobilizing global forum. Uh, the high-level meeting in September had very inconclusive outcomes, it seemed to me. and and and, and it, we will only see as we get towards the end of next year and into the following year as to whether, whether it continues to have some mobilizing capacity. Uh, but I do think that clearly the NCDs remain a uh, profound and an ascendant challenge uh, for the uh, uh, BRICS countries and other emerging powers. And certainly this creates a major, a major opening for engagement on a bilateral basis by the United States on best practices and technical support and some of the key market-related um, and trade-related issues. Looking forward in our calendar, we, had the, we just had the, the World AIDS Day and very important speech by the President and others. 
we're looking at the secretary sponsoring a major gathering in early May on maternal and child health. We're looking at the G8 summit in Chicago, first week of May. We're looking at a June summit here in the United States on vaccines, a global summit. We're looking at the AIDS 2012 meeting here uh, the third week of July in Washington, D.C. These are all opportunities for a more creative and innovative approach diplomatically with respect uh, to emerging powers and integrating them into the discussions that happen across these multiple high-level fora that will be on our soil and which will allow us an opportunity to ex explore this, um, uh, this option even further. But thank you all so much for the chance to, to be here, and thank you all for coming. Steve, thank you. Um, I also want to thank all of you for coming today and, and spending your morning with us. Uh, for those who weren't able to be here for the entire time uh, or, who, or who want to review some of the information that was discussed, the video and audio recordings of today's session will be archived on our website at www.smartglobalhealth.org. So you may visit the site and review the video and other content uh, that we've produced related to, to the BRICS and, and other work on global health at your convenience. Also, I should let you know that we will plan on publishing a summary of the presentations, conclusions, and recommendations that have come out of the meeting today. So look for that in the first quarter of 2012. And in the next phase of the Global Health Policy Center's work, we will continue to explore the changing landscape of global health cooperation. We will be expanding our work in some ways to consider how some of the European countries are shaping or reshaping their global health agendas in light of the recent financial crises, as well as the ways in which actors in Asia, such as China, Japan, and South Korea, and the Americas, including Canada, Mexico, and Brazil, among others, continue to develop their global health policy and assistance strategies. So please stay tuned. Uh, finally, as I mentioned at the outset, CSIS's work on the BRICS and emerging practices in global health cooperation has been part of a broad effort incorporating many of the regional programs at CSIS, as well as partners overseas in Brazil, China, India, Russia, and South Africa. Uh, there are a number of people at CSIS in particular who have contributed to the work, uh, including many of whom were not on the stage today and who were working behind the scenes. So if you'll indulge me, I just want to thank everyone personally. It's, this is pretty quick, but, but it's very important. Uh, there's been a considerable <laughs> amount of, of effort into this. Uh, this includes Jeffrey Bean, Jiaoqing Boynton, Charles Freeman, Savina Rupani, Michael Grabiel, Caitlin Watson, Uttara Dukipati, Tezi Schaefer, Jennifer Cook, Farah Tahir, and several other interns from the Africa program, uh, Andy Cutchins, Judy Twig, Aika Zikibayeva, Suzanne Brundage, Hannah Danji, Matt Fisher, Seth Gannon, Steve Morrison, Julia Nagel, and Carolyn Schrote from the Global Health Policy Center. So please join me in, once again, thanking our panelists today, and join me in thanking um, staff at, at CSIS and elsewhere for sharing their work and uh, their thoughts and perspectives on emerging practices in global health cooperation. Thank you.